Hello there YouTube, it's your boy 3 back with another kicking graphic novel review. Yes, today we are looking at The Jurassic League from DC Comics. This was already on my review list, but uh, I did move it up uh, the list since it was announced that a movie is coming out with James Gunn producing. It doesn't say directing or writing, it just says producing. Uh, part of me feels like this will probably be an animated film, uh, maybe for kids, like a family-friendly movie. Uh, or maybe one of those straight-to-DVD ones that are real fun, that I really enjoy. This book, uh... Let me just read you the back of the book real quick. <clears throat> Defenders of truth, justice, and the prehistoric way. You know the story. An infant escapes the destruction of its home planet and is deposited on Earth to be raised by human parents. A goddess from a lost city defends truth. A Tyrannosaurus Rex dons the visage of a bat to strike fear into evildoers' hearts. This heroic trinity, alongside a league of other superpowered dinosaurs, join forces to save a prehistoric Earth from the sinister machinations of Dark Side. Wait, what? Okay, maybe you don't know the story. Witness this brand new, yet older than time, adventure and experience the Justice League as you've never seen them before. Juan Geddon from Pennyworth and Daniel Warren Johnson from Wonder Woman Dead Earth bring you this action-packed tale of heroic herbivores and courageous carnivores. Collects the Jurassic League issues 1 through 6. Yeah, so I remember back when this was announced for the single issues, I was like, I'm there. I'm there. Dinosaurs are one of my favorite things. Superheroes are another favorite thing of mine. Uh, you know, you've seen plenty of them on this channel and the second channel. So I had to be there. You know, Mike Spencer worked on, or Spicer worked on this too. Very interesting. It mostly focuses on the main trinity, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Uh, but there is Green Lantern, Flash, and Aquaman as well. And it's a very fun book. There's nothing fancy about it. It doesn't do anything groundbreaking. You know, it doesn't... Uh, reinvent the genre or anything it's just hey what if the justice league were fucking dinosaurs dude and it's rad uh, and it's like a very pulpy kind of dinosaur world too where there are like dinosaurs that you would think of them and then there are like cavemen living alongside them but then there's also like humanoid ish dinosaurs very interesting very interesting so uh this dinosaur superman is actually raised by human parents and then batman is kind of a theropod tyrannosaurid kind of thing very very interesting and his parents were killed uh by the, the joker who's joker zard who cooks he looks kind of maybe like a monolophosaurus or something Pretty interesting, but of course, you know, he's Batman's arch foe. Very cool. And he killed and ate this bat dinosaur's parents, and then he did that to this human child as well, and the child kind of starts to follow the dinosaur Batman around. Of course, he's kind of like a Robin-esque thing. Very interesting. Uh, then there's one called Black Mantasaurus, which is Black Manta, but he's a manta I don't know, maybe they could have done better uh, with him, to be completely honest. But uh, I really like the Aquaman, because he fights alongside all these all these sea creatures. He has like a megalodon and a big old octopus, a giant crustacean, some dolphins, a big crab he rides on and stuff. And one of the dolphins, the dolphins all just have like modern day people names. So one is named like Matilda. <laughs> It's just such a weird, funny contrast. You have to love it. I, I really liked that little Aquaman segment where he uh, fights Black Manta. And I think he's supposed to be kind of Baryonyx-ish, maybe. And then Wonder Woman is a Triceratops, just straight up. Uh, that, one's, that one's pretty easy. She leaves her island to come fight a big threat. And she's actually really fucking cool. <laughs> she rides a Pteranodon. Uh... Which is really dope. And Superman, he's a sauropod dinosaur. And if you're less familiar with dinosaurs than superheroes, a lot I have a lot of dinosaur fans on this channel, so I haven't been doing terribly much dino explaining. But Supersaur, as they call him, is a sauropod, which is one of the long-necked dinosaurs. You know, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Patagotitan, uh, Argentinosaurus, Titanosaurus, etc. 
but he doesn't have the long neck. So he's got like the head and the tail, but he doesn't have the long neck. And that is just odd to me. There's something wrong about it. Uh, I'm not sure which kind of sauropod he's supposed to be. There are some pages or there's some issues where he looks Brachiosaurus-ish and there's some issues where he looks Apatosaurus-ish. Uh, and then he has to fight a Bizarro version of himself, Brontazaro. And then there's a Giganta, whose name hasn't really changed. Uh, Giganta is, of course, a Wonder Woman foe. This is her dinosaur foe to fight, which is just a really extra huge dinosaur. I guess it's supposed to be Giganotosaurus, which would make the most sense. You know? <laughs> they got the same same names there pretty cool but uh you know they are all beings all these dinosaur justice league members are pretty much what you'd expect they're all beings that fight to save life uh the batman one is a little less developed uh but you know we'll see him become more classically batman as it goes along all very fun so the trinity eventually all end up in the same place fighting these villains and there's also a cover art that's like a child of dark side playing with figures of these characters and there's also the flash who seems like a raptor and green lantern is the green torch who's clearly a parasaurolophus you know and there's more there's more villains coming along there's <laughs> an, a, a version of Atrocitus, you know, Atrocitus, the, the Red Lantern. He shows up. He's kind of cool. Atrocitosaurus. So he's a would-be kind of Red Lantern. And then there's also a Reverse Flash, who is a big prehistoric turtle. I don't know if he's supposed to be more of a just giant tortoise, which would have been after the dinosaur's times. But there's also the Archelon which was a giant turtle, a big sea turtle that lived like the same time as T-Rex in the Cretaceous, in the same seas as like the Mosasaurs and whatnot. But that's, that's a sea critter. And this is a land tortoise, so I don't think that's what he's supposed to be. But they all fight. And then those, the three secondaries, the Aquaman, Flash, and Green Lantern, are a bit more comedic and they're not really fleshed out. This book really focuses on the main trinity. And there's two distinct art styles in this as well. The second one that's shown off isn't my favorite. It's not bad. It's just it's just not what I'd prefer. It's a little dinosaur's attacky, which is a compliment. I had the complete set of those trading cards, which I should make a video about. Uh they're awesome. But it just doesn't feel like it works as much here. I prefer the main art style of this book more. And there's this giant intergalactic interdimensional egg. And I know I read the back of the book and the back of the book says it's a dark side. But I didn't read the back of the book before reading this. I didn't feel the need to. Didn't even think to, to be honest. And it's a pretty easy guess that it's dark side. And he's an ankylosaur, which is, it's, it's, I guess... An odd choice in my mind at first, because I was like, they chose an herbivore for dark side, But it's such a heavily armored, strong, capable dinosaur that I was like, you know what, that makes sense. And eventually you do see some Omega Beams, and then, of course, it's like, yeah, that's dark side for sure. He's huge. And he's apparently been going throughout the dinosaur multiverse, and he kills planets, but then he'll save, like, the most powerful being on each planet, which is why there's a Bizarro and a Giganta and an Atrocitus, etc. He saves them from the worlds he destroys, and then he brings them along with him so that they can prepare other worlds uh, for him. And by the way, there's this one comic cover. It's like an oil painting of the Triceratops Wonder Woman riding a Quetzalcoatlus incredible it's beautiful i would love a virgin cover of it it's from jurassic league number five variant covers by jonathan marks it's gorgeous anyway uh the book continues on you know they're fighting against dark side and it, it's just <laughs> you know there's 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 nothing that you wouldn't expect to see i don't i don't know what to say it's not a bad book in the slightest it's just there's nothing impressive about it 
it's a fun what if the Justice League were dinosaurs book, but there's nothing crazy fancy about it. You know, Wonder Woman gets a like like she wears the Triceratops Ares armor at one point. That's cool. But I mean there's nothing fancy about it. Like, yeah. You know, they 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 fight the dark side and Kyle Sore, they're able to come together for that, because of course they are. I mean, what what else would happen, right? And they all fight, and it seems like the Supersaurus sacrifices himself to defeat Darkseid, but, like, we all know that's fucking bull, right? He, like, throws, they flies him into a volcano or whatever. The Jurassic League protects the world. But then, of course, later we see, like, the last panel is his arm breaking out of the volcano. We know he survived. And, yeah, it's cool. It's a fun story. I enjoyed it. But let's just say I'm glad I got it on sale. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. But it was just... That was mostly just because I'm a big dinosaur buff. So if you're like a big dinosaur buff that also likes superheroes, you, you might enjoy this more than the average person. But for the average comic goer or superhero fan, you're going to read it and probably be like, eh, whatever, Jurassic League. Okay. It's just okay. Nothing really special about it. But I did want to get the review out of the way now that there's movie news. And, you know, DC doesn't make like two-thirds of the movies they announce. Who knows if it'll even happen. But, hey, dinosaurs are, I guess, in demand right now. I mean, the mon the genre cycle is still transitioning over to monsters. Monster stuff is doing better than... Superhero stuff right now, and I feel like this kind of falls into that. And we've seen that focus a lot in comics, you know? Like, you remember when Marvel's two biggest books were both monster books and Mortal Hulk and Venom? And then James Gunn is like, hey, you know, let's make a, a monster <laughs> movie. Creature Commandos, let's do that. And let's do Jurassic League and focus on stuff like that. Well, also still having the traditional superheroes. Plus, you know, MonsterVerse and all this Godzilla stuff. Kaiju stuff doing well. Dinosaur stuff doing well. The Jurassic franchise is already coming back next year. Dinosaurs and monsters are, are in right now. Which is good for me, because they're my favorite things in the world. But this book's still just okay. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, etc. I'll be seeing you all next time. Bye for now.